Apple released a new Apple TV 4K. It's got some great features to it. I love the remote. I'm gonna make a separate video on this device, but for this video, I wanna cover tips and uses that work with most Apple TVs. That way, if you're new and this is your first Apple TV, you get more out of it. If you've already have an Apple TV, you learn some new stuff to get some more uses out of your device. Now, we all know the Apple TV will stream movies and media from all different services, but there are a lot of other features that you may not know about. Now, before I start, most of these tips and features work with Apple TV, fourth generation and newer. Apple third generation is eight years old and uses a different interface. So anything before that is not gonna support these features. But if you wanna learn more or upgrade to a new Apple TV 4K, you can find links in the description along with the HD model. Also find links to the new Siri remote if you wanna purchase that separately. Just make sure it works with your Apple TV before you do. Now I put these tips and uses into two different categories. There's the setup and then there's the control slash features side of tips. Now, one of the most important things to do if you share your Apple TV with other people is to set up accounts. If you go into settings, go under users and accounts, you can add a new user. To sign in with the phone, like in my wife's case, I would take her phone, bring it near the Apple TV, Bluetooth would recognize it, sign in on the phone, and then you'd be connected. Or you could sign in manually. You would enter the Apple ID of the person you're trying to add, hit continue, and then add your password. Once you set up your different accounts, your shows are gonna sync across all your devices. So if you're watching on an iPad, the up next section is going to show your shows and it'll stay consistent. And when you wanna listen to music, it's gonna be your music. I love the up next section on Apple TVs, but if your whole family is working under the same account, your shows could get bumped to the end. So break it up, that way the kids can have their account and uh, the adults can have their own accounts. Next is a new feature that Apple introduced with the new Apple TV. It's called Color Balance. This will work with the new Apple TV 4K and the previous version. This will allow you to use your phone's camera up next to the screen to read the colors off of the screen, tell the Apple TV what the color results are, and then the Apple TV will calibrate the colors to industry standards. That's pretty cool. It used to be hard to get colors right. Now your TV can be out of whack, and the Apple TV will make it look beautiful for you. To access color balance, go into settings, video and audio, scroll down to the bottom, and there you will see color balance. Next tip is you could use a single or a pair of HomePods or HomePod minis as speakers for your TV. Once paired, you could get stereo sound out of two HomePod minis, or you could get Dolby Atmos out of a full-size HomePod. To access this, you'd go under settings, you would go down to audio and pick your default audio output. So in this case, I could pick my stereo pair of HomePods in the garage. The way it knows what it could be paired with is based on the room that was assigned to each of the devices. Since those stereo pair of HomePods are in the garage and I've made this Apple TV a garage device, it sees the two and will connect. If this Apple TV was in the kitchen, it'd want to pair up with the HomePod out there. Next, you can control your TV volume using the Apple TV remote. With the new remote, you can actually power on your TV or receiver and you have some more options. To set this up, you go under settings, remotes and devices, scroll down and you will see turn on TV with remote and volume control, which is auto. You can change it from auto and have it learn a new remote. Definitely nice being able to use one remote. I've been doing it for a while with the older generation and devices triggering each other. This way makes it much easier. Next, after you're all set up and you have way too many apps, you're gonna need to get that stuff organized. And like an iPhone, if you hold down on an app, you could then start moving it around and arrange it and put it wherever you want. But you'll see it's not gonna put it into a folder for you. But if you press the play button, you're going to get this extra set of options. You could delete that app, add it to a new folder, move it to one of the existing folders I have here, or cancel out. So in this case, I want to move this to games and it'll drop it in there. So click and hold down on an app, press the play button, 
create a new folder, throw a title on it, and press done. Now let's look at some of the control options. Uh, my first recommendation to get more tip, whatever you want to call this, to get more out of your Apple TV is really consider looking at some of the Apple services. We use the Apple One. For us, we were already doing family Apple Music for $15. We were doing cloud service for $10. For $5 more, we added News Plus. We have Apple TV Plus, Fitness, and we have Arcade. So really consider that to get more out of it. That leads me to my next tip, which is for gaming. You can pair an Xbox or PlayStation controller to the Apple TV to use with gaming. If you look at the games available, like this basketball game, that looks like a console quality game. So being able to pair up a controller is cool. To do this, you would go into settings under remote and devices, hit Bluetooth, and then you would want to pair up a controller. This will explain how to do it. Hit OK. When the controller is in pairing mode, it'll show up under devices. You select it, you connect it, and ready to play games. Now this tip is really cool. I like this feature. If you're using Apple Fitness, you can pair your Apple Watch up to your workout. That way it'll show your exercise that's happening right on the screen. To do that, open up Fitness, and now it's gonna ask who's working out. I'll hit OK. To ask if I want, I'll connect to the Apple TV. Now we're connected up. So let's say I want to just do a run. Click on it, let's start that workout. We got the countdown on the watch happening. Boom, we are in it. We're in the workout, we're moving, we're just running, listening to music. By syncing your watch to the TV, if you're supposed to stay in a certain heart rate zone, you know whether you need to apply a little more to your workout, or maybe you're starting to get out of that correct zone and you need to pull it back a little. And once you leave the workout, it will pause your watch for you automatically. Next control tip is holding down on the little screen button. That's going to bring up users, so if you wanna switch between people, it'll allow you to sleep your Apple TV along with any devices connected to it, such as your TV, it'll turn off the power, or your receiver. Here you see what is playing. You can also choose to send something to another set of speakers, or you can control your smart home. You'll see the little smart home icon, you click on that. I can see cameras or activate my favorite scenes. If I click on a camera, it'll go full screen, and I can actually go between my cameras and take a look at what's going on outside my house. If you have a supported doorbell, when someone rings the doorbell, the video will actually pop up on the screen while you're watching. It's very convenient having that kind of smart home control, but you gotta think about what you wanna put in your favorites to be able to access quickly. The camera thing I think is really cool, being able to see them that fast and easy. One of the things I like about the Apple TV is being able to incorporate it into shortcuts and routines. I made a video about a routine I have that I just touch my phone to an NFC sticker and it triggers that and turns everything, switches it to my account. It's perfect. Now what I've done is I've saved that routine triggered by the NFC onto my home screen along with two other versions of it. So depending which room I'm going into, I would press that and it would trigger the shortcut. To look at that shortcut real quick, the Apple Remote app is waking the family room TV. I had it wait two seconds because I think it was too soon for it to switch accounts. So it's switching to my account. Then it's opening up the TV app on that family room, Apple TV. Very convenient, easy to write. Now, one of my favorite tips that I learned not too long ago is if you're watching a movie, I think you've been there, I know I have, where you're like, what are they saying? You're turning up the volume, you're backing up. And then eventually after trying too many times, you may turn on subtitles. You don't have to do that. This is one my wife liked. You would say, hold down on the side, the, the Siri remote or the microphone on the older remote. What did they say? And it'll hop back 15 seconds, turn on subtitles, play that section, and then turn subtitles off. <sighs> Brilliant. Uh, I just think of all the times that I've 
did turn on the subtitles and backed up and ah. Now if you have multiple Apple TVs, you're probably gonna want it, the home screens to match across them. Maybe not, but in my house, I want them consistent so everybody can find apps easily. To turn that on, you would go under the main user's account. Under iCloud, you will see one home screen. It keeps your apps and home screens up to date across every Apple TV using this iCloud account. Now, a tip for anyone who bought the new Apple TV 4K, make sure you use HDMI 2.1 cables that support up to 8K video. You need that to be able to take advantage of the high frame rate video. Next is AirPlay. If you're not familiar with AirPlay, it allows you to send video, audio, and photos from your device to the Apple TV. So that's great. Maybe you want to share pictures with a family or friends. You can click on the little square with an arrow in it at the bottom for sharing. Scroll down and then select AirPlay and it will cast that image. Right now I wanna to go to the garage TV. Next tip, when you buy an Apple TV at the time of recording, you get a year of Apple TV Plus. Watch Ted Lasso. You gotta watch it. It is a great show, it is funny, and it's a feel good show that people love. So that's probably the most important tip in this video. Really, there is so much that you can do with these Apple TVs. This is just a few of the tips and uses out there. If you have any tips or uses for other Apple TV users, please let us know in the comment section. Now, if you made it this far, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps it get recommended to more people. Next, make sure to check out this video over here for some more Apple slash smart home slash awesomeness. I don't know what I'm putting there yet, but it'll be good and it'll tie to this video. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.